All you positive heads out there, thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. So happy to be back with you guys again and also to have my good friend Christopher Jackson here to help steer the ship today. Hello, Chris. Welcome, buddy. Hello. It's been a minute. It's been, uh, it you, we were doing t- every Tuesday for a while and it's a Thursday, so we're getting crafty on these guys. They're, they, every time they think they can predict me, all of a sudden, bam, mm. Thursday instead. <laughs> Nobody puts Brandon in a box. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Which is so perfect because that's what we're going to talk about today. Putting people in a box. We're going to talk a little bit about non-traditional relationship stru- uh, structures, uh, monogamy, polyamory and I, I you know it's something that i've touched on a few times uh throughout the history of the show um and i thought this would be a really good one chris to include you in because you're someone who's really lived uh you've lived and breathed non you know non-traditional relationship structures for for quite some time much more experience than, than most people i know in that whole realm so i thought yeah. you know you always have so much good insight uh this would be one and it's it's one that it's a it's a topic that seems to be bubbling up more and more as people you know i was having a conversation not too long ago uh at uh, a party and this guy was talking about it he's like you know the the reality is uh we, we all of us that are sort of venturing down this path of non-traditional relationship structure structures we don't really necessarily know exactly what we're doing <laughs> like in some cases it's like i don't even he was saying i don't even like uh labels i just know that i'm (laughs) non-monogamous and trying to figure it out and uh, i thought that was a kind of an interesting way to point it out and before we we dive in i would like to um just quick reference i as i mentioned i've touched on this multiple times with guests uh i think once or twice by myself um episode 21 is is one if any of you guys are really interested in this topic today and you want to go back and kind of deeper dive uh check out episode 21 episode 347 episode 639 and I believe episode 389 also touches on uh, this subject. So I just want to throw that out at the top for anyone, because like I said, I- I'm getting a lot of people. This just seems to come up more and more often. And uh, it's it's actually kind of relevant to, to the situation that I've been dealing with that I'll touch on in a minute. But um, where should we start with this, Chris? Um. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I mean, for me, I think a big part of it is like turning our relationships into elationships <laughs> like actually having elationships you know what that means is just you know through our connection with others that we actually find ourselves lifted up to our mm. highest 
and and likewise that we lift others up you know to experiencing you know their highest expression of themselves yeah and absolutely and then also experiencing true love because i i don't think most of us have access to that and i think a, a big part of that like the reason that open relationship has always appealed so much to me was you know i tend to like take everything apart and question everything like getting to the root of like why do we do things a certain way what's um no not you yeah. <laughs> uh, que- question everything right and the way i've come up with is you know a big part more than polyamory or open relationship or any of that what's what's really paramount in this conversation to me is transparency yeah so it's like wherever you lack being fully transparent in your relationships with others you actually lack the ability to really be truly loved Mm. because there is something in the way of you getting to experience being truly loved fully for all of you. Mm. You know, that is to say like, you know, if we suppress any thoughts that we have, if we suppress anything, you know, then essentially we're not truly loving that other person and we're not truly loving ourselves. Therefore we're not the space to experience true love Mm. because we're, we're actually manipulating that person's perception of us, you know, or that moment to get what we want rather than actually having faith and trust in our ability to be loved, like for all of it, for the, the light, the dark, the, you know, good or bad. And I think there's an empowering way to have that kind of transparency in relationship. Um, it's a whole different form of communication. Um, meaning that like most of us, I don't feel actually ever really even have communication. And we've talked about that before, um, mm-hmm. you know, and really to have communication, like breaking down that word again, you know, really quick. It's co means with immune is oneness and vacation is the action of, So the word itself means the action of being one with another person. But most of Mm. the time we're operating from, you know, and that I'm only want to tell that, you know, I I only want to tell that person what I want them to know so that I'll be loved and accepted. Right. Rather than giving myself the opportunity to be loved and accepted fully for anything. And then having an empowering way, like to have communication, which is really sharing Like when you're communicating, you're sharing, you know, having oneness. If I'm one with somebody, I share anything and everything because there's no fear. Right. Right. If, if I'm coming from separation, then, you know, that's the source of suffering. And then I'm really the one responsible for it because I don't give others the opportunity to see me fully. Yeah. You know, and then there's certain ways to, to begin to practice speaking with transparency and sharing in a way that's empowering to ourselves and to others. And I think one it's, it's separating out our language around how we, how we speak about ourselves, like our identity. So separate the identity out from the thoughts that we're having out from the sensations and the feelings that we're having. So then it's like, instead I can share with you like, Oh, wow. I'm having, you know, these physical sensations right now of like, uh, feeling like expansive and lightness in my chest, right. Or I'm feeling butterflies in my stomach, you know, and excitement. And, you know, immediately that links sharing physical sensations first links the other person up to you. They're all of a sudden experiencing what you're experiencing. It gives immediate empathy. And then, and then beyond that, you start talking about like the thoughts that I'm having. Oh, wow. I just like had this thought, like this other person is so attractive or beautiful. Right. Or I just had a thought, you know, that, uh, wow. Wondering if like, I'm not valued or I'm not appreciated. And as we become that space for just, really being clear and transparent. You know, it's like, I'm having those thoughts. I'm not those thoughts. Like, Oh my God, I just had a thought that I wanted to crush that guy's head that just cut me off in traffic. 
right? Rather than saying, oh, I want to cut that guy's head off, you know, which it creates, there's a, a difference in perception. Like when, when we become, I like to call this becoming a clearing in a way, you know, cause you're just, you're always an empty space when you're sharing everything. Right. And then, and then that gives other people permission to share everything also. So you literally become a permissionary and, and then when you're not holding stuff in, you're actually, there's this wonderful thing that happens where you start to feel greater lightness mm-hmm. in your being. No, like you're not, no, nothing's repressed, right? Right. Nothing's holding you down. You know, so right. it's like you actually, and this is where I say like the source of creating a space for relationship is first having an relationship with ourselves, which is yeah. to say to just get into the practice of sharing everything. Sharing is caring. I love that word. And then that ties into the whole, you know, poly conversation. But, um, right. you know, the, the big thing around that to me is getting. So whether you choose to be poly or monogamous, to me, it's, it's kind of irrelevant. You know, the, truly the only way to have a real relationship and to experience true love is first to be in a space of having that true love for yourself Right. And then sharing it with others. And then you'll find a lot of the things that you are afraid of sharing. Like that when you're not afraid of it, people don't judge you. Right. People can only judge us when we judge ourselves. And it's so always it's going like, to be a reflection, right? Yeah. And so it's like whatever. Yeah. There was a good, great example of this. I like to always bring up, you know, this, this example and, I think it was in the nineties where Madonna, you know, was coming out with her erotica album Mm -hmm. and some photos or video got leaked of her with women. And there was Mm -hmm. all this hoopla. Everybody was saying, Oh my God, Madonna's a lesbian or, (laughs) and, and there were, there was all this talk of like fear of her losing all of her sponsorship and, you know, and followers and, you know, and, everybody was waiting to see what she was going to say. And it was like, I don't know if it was one or two days, three days later, you know, she came out publicly and she says, yeah, I'm bisexual. So, and everybody was like, Oh, okay. (laughs) Right. You know, and, and nobody, there's no shame attached to it. Right. Right. She was coming from it. Like, uh, are you serious? (laughs) Yeah. And, and it's funny, but if she had hidden it or tried to deny it, yeah. She would have been crucified for it. Right. You know, it's like people right. only judge us when we judge ourselves. I mean, they might have their own judgments or like say, oh, well, I don't really want to listen to Madonna anymore because I don't agree with that. But it's it's a lot different than judging that person. Right. You know, and it's yeah. only when we're hiding things that we create that space. When we're judging ourselves, then others do that. And this that ties into like a whole deeper level of existence like whatever we're being is actually what gets reflected back to us so if we're being shame then shame is what gets reflected back to us if we're being love then love is what gets reflected back to us so from that context like i think tying that into like polyamory and you know and you know all of these different options you know when it comes to how, how we want to engage in relationships from a sexual perspective i think you really like i would ask the question of people who are considering this like what what serves them you know and and what do they have you know if there's fear around certain things like what's at the root of that fear Mm. and then what's possible you know in terms of like let's say a lot of the time i find that you know, my reason for wanting to be in a monogamous relationship with someone is to have security. Right. You know, so there's this, there's this insecurity at the root of it, you know, that I ultimately, like when I delved into it for myself, it was like, Oh, there's this fear that there's something wrong with me. Mm. You know, and that I'm not worthy of love and connection. So, like the greatest way for me to overcome that is to tie somebody into a contract. Right. 
hey, let's be boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, and and then the funny thing about that is like, you know, let's say Brandon, you and I like agree, hey, let's be boyfriend, girlfriend. And you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay. That sounds good. You're hot. You know, like, yeah, you're hot and great. Now, what did we just agree to? That we own each other. And essentially, it's like, I'm, that's how instantly what I feel. It's like all of my energy has been now sort of put into a bottle and someone has the, you know, or into a, a box and, and someone holds the key. You well, know, and yeah. It's, it's, and, and more than that, also, like what I'm saying is, what did you just agree to? You just agreed to being my definition of a girlfriend. Right, right. And you don't even know what that is. <laughs> right. And I, just, and I just agreed to being your definition of a boyfriend. Right. You know, so now I'm not even having a relationship with you. I'm having Hold on, little, why am I the girl here? <laughs> okay, well, whatever. You can make I'm, the girl just, girl. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but, but now I'm not even having a relationship with you. I'm having a relationship with you through my expectations of what a girlfriend is supposed to be. Right. So, so long as you're in that box of my expectations, I love you. Yep. As soon as you veer to the left or the right a little bit, whoa, wait a minute. Hey, yep. you're not, you're not honoring your agreement. And you're like, what are you talking about? I totally am honoring <laughs> my agreement. I'm being the, the girlfriend that, you know, that I perceive myself to need to be. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what we agreed to. We agreed that you were yeah. going to be the girlfriend that I expect you to be. Right. And, and you know, and, and the conversations, unfortunately, don't tend to be that real. Otherwise, we'd get to the root of these relationships much quicker. You know, instead, <laughs> they get veiled in all kinds of like, you know, anger and, um, you know, disenchantment. And then it's like all of a sudden, you know, you start having the experience of like me not thinking that you're that amazing. And then you start mm-hmm. to question, you, know, you start to feel disempowered in the relationship. The right. relationship. I like to say that this was a recent one that just came through is like really discovering how many times in the past I've been an asshole. And what I mean by that is that I'm, I'm giving people relationships. Like I'm shitting all over them. I'm shooting all over them. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so this is an empowering way to actually see ourselves as assholes. You know, just like there's an empowering way to see ourselves as idiots, like where we're so, you know, the word idiot means a private person where we're so behind our own point of view that we actually don't see or perceive reality as it is. We only perceive it through the lens of our, our perceptions. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I guess like applying that to open relationships, the reason why I think, you know, that can be super empowering is it doesn't put a container on it. You know, it actually right. allows us to get to know each other, you know, and build a friendship first based on getting to know each other rather than building a contract in which we're setting each other up for failure and ourselves. Right. You know, so now it's like, okay, well, by, by being open, you know, so long as it's expressed this way, it's like, Hey, I really want to get to know you and, and you to get to know me before we start trying to put a container on this about what we want it to be. Right. And then we have a relationship built upon what is rather than on what we want and what we feel is lacking in our our lives. Right. Yeah. And I think a big one for people is, you know, I think some people, probably a lot of people listening think, wow, um, this is so far out of the, the cultural norm to even consider some part of them can, can hear all of this and think, okay, this sounds really appealing on some level. And of course, like, like episode 347, for example, I, I share the Ted talk by Christopher Ryan, who wrote the book sex at dawn, basically showing, you know, uh, the scientific 
proof, you know, that we are not, we're non-monogamous, you know, beings by design um, and comparing us to bonobos and chimps and how we're almost identical, you know, more, more so than Eastern elephants and Western elephants and all of that stuff. So, I mean, I won't go into much of that. You guys can go back to old episodes if you want to explore that piece of it. But, um, you know, uh, I think so a lot of people, it resonates at some level, like the idea of, you know, wow, so you mean I'm not a bad person? I can resonate with the idea is like I'm, I, I'm really not an awful person because I'm attracted to someone else or I want to connect with someone else. But it's it's you know it's like they can't even imagine a, a, attracting a scenario where that's okay. And that's something right. where you know it gets back to as you. For me personally, it's like, you know, as I've explored this, this path, um, it's, you know, I understand that the universe source, higher self, whatever you want to call it, it can mirror back whatever, wherever you're resonating, wherever you're vibrating, wherever you're, you're, you're taking it energetically. If you're coming to a, a state of, uh, of an expanded enough perspective of, you know, unconditional love, not, you know, not I love you, but I love you if. I, you know, the opposite of jealousy, compersion, I do what you want for you. Um, right. I'm excited by your excitement uh, yeah. or connection or your, your excitement about connecting with someone who's, you know, different in some way, shape or form. And that's, that's, I think, theoretically really appealing to some people, but then they're like, oh, I'm just not there. You know, like I'm too jealous. I'm too. And, you know, I can, one thing that I can say from my own personal journey is like, what I experience as far as jealousy now compared to, you know, 15 years ago or whatever is like night and day. So as I believe it, Chris, this is like a part of our journey as we collectively sort of ascend or expand our consciousness expands. We part of that is realizing as you realize, hold on there's only me in the room. There's only one of us and I'm a unique emanation of the one. And, and, and by that, it's like, it's like sort of these relative truths we've talked about before. Like, you and I are separate. You and I are one. You know, it's all me, but I'm also completely unique, both simultaneously. So no one will ultimately ever replace you, right? And so coming to that journey, that point, and, and some of you guys listening to this, maybe, you know, it may even be the first time you've even considered this as something as viable. And it doesn't mean it's got to be like sinks in today and tomorrow you and your partner have an open relationship and everything's peachy. It may be something that's unfolding over time and as you expand, it becomes more and more, it comes more and more into your field of something that you, um, you know, not only could deal with, but would prefer and thrive, you know, living from, from this sort of, uh, what I believe is getting back to, and as Christopher Ryan talks about, uh, you know, in, in his book, Sex at Dawn, like this is actually our roots, you know, 200, 300,000 years of modern man, only 5,000 years have we done this, uh, you know, monogamous pair bonding thing. Uh, and that's like what a couple percentage uh, <laughs> points, <laughs> uh, no more than 5% of the time that modern man has existed. And that's mind blowing. It's like yet another thing that's completely to some degree backwards in our society and it, it, not to put down anyone who's who's in a monogamous relationship but I think more importantly um, and because there's there's no ultimate wrong choice more importantly there's got to there's got to stop the shaming of people who are you know think how many relationships Chris have been destroyed because someone you know who was married and attracted to someone else and then they feel well, like they're awful they're bad they're wrong what a terrible person right. meanwhile it's like being mad because i have blue eyes like it's it, you know and thinking i'm a bad person for that it's well, it's this is, it's this crazy is where, like I, what i'd like to really bring in is a new context that i don't think is often discussed and that's the transparent relationships because this is where you know it's really being uh polyamorous or monogamous or open you know, is kind of irrelevant. That's kind of like the, the what, but the why for all of it really is to experience the greatest version of yourself and the other, right? Yeah. If we can, if we can agree that the reason we want to get into a relationship is really to experience the best in ourselves and to empower others to experience the best in themselves, you know, to feel liberated and elevated then that gives us a place to start. And, and you always have the power to create that by being transparent. Mm, right. Right. 
And then that transparency, like this is a great place for people who are interested, you know, or they're curious around, uh, you know, poly or any of that, or maybe they're in a monogamous relationship now. You know, I say like, you don't need to like jump right into, you know, having sex with other people. You know, actually you can, you can dip your toe in the water just by beginning to get transparent and creating a context with your, your partner (laughs) that, that this is what I really want is I want you to know that you can share anything with me. And I want to create a space where I can share everything with you so that we can both actually experience what it feels like to be truly purely loved, you know, as we are. And here's the thing, like I may share that, Oh my God, I just had this thought of like that person's so sexy. Wow. You know, I, that me sharing it actually very often instead of holding it in actually Mm -hmm. releases the charge around it. So just in me talking about it, I will very often, you know, relieve myself of the energy behind it. Right. You know, and then it's like, Oh, shame. Right. Think of the shame that that releases for the partners who are holding these kind of thoughts and feelings in. If imagine being able to, yeah, j- just dipping your toes in the water to that degree, sharing with your partner exactly how you feel and these and being loved and accepted and and them holding the space for that think of what a relief that is how much shame is is being suppressed uh out there you know for these very natural sort of things yeah and i think it's i want to emphasize again it's really important to create a context with whoever you're in that relationship with about hey this is something that i'd really like to create like i'm inspired yeah. to create a space where you you feel safe to share anything and everything that comes up for you, any thoughts, any feelings, you know, without attachment to them, you know, cause again, yeah. it's like we have thoughts and feelings all the time. I mean, I, I would, I would venture a guess to say that everybody who's listening to this has had a thought at one time or another of wanting to kill somebody. <laughs> Does that make them murderers? <sighs> right. <laughs> Well, in their, in their minds, maybe, you know, maybe I did it in my mind, you know, is that, you know, so in that, from that perspective, maybe we're all guilty of being murderers. Right. Right. And at that space, then it's like, well, what, what really separates us from, from that? Well, it's the choice of doing something with it. And the thing is, the more we express these thoughts, the less power they have over us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, maybe if more people were talking about God, I really like, you know, I'm having thoughts about wanting to kill that person. You know, they'd, they'd actually not go out killing people. Yeah. You know, and if I feel okay in my, in my monogamous relationship to be able to talk about, Oh my God, I just saw this hot girl and I had thoughts of like, gosh, I'd love to have sex with her. And, you know, I can share that with you in the relationship that, the actual charge of me really wanting to go have sex with her dissipates. Right. But if I hide it, if I keep it in, then, then that, that power stays inside of me. Right. You know, so if you really want to create a space where it's less likely that your lover is going to cheat on you, then, then create a space where it's really, you know, you can talk about anything where they can share all of that stuff. And where you're not going to get triggered by it. Because here's the other thing is like, if somebody is sharing something with you openly, the thing that we're most scared of, I feel like in relationships is, is separation. The thing that, that I think scares us most in the whole context of being cheated on is not so much the idea of that person having sex with somebody else, but it's what we make it mean about us that we might be replaced or that that person might be perceived as better than we are or that it it means that there's something less than about us. Well, when you really like look into that stuff, well, how does that have any basis? And then the truth is also like, if I create a space for you in a relationship where you know that you can share anything with me and that I Mm -hmm. love you fully and completely, are you ever going to want to leave me? Right. Exactly. Unconditional love is like the ultimate gift, 
right? Home. I want it's for home. you what you want for you. I, yeah, that's home. I absolutely. You may want to explore something else, but you know, the, the reality is, is you're always going to come back to the place you feel safe. I, I liken it to, you know, there was, there's this one distinction that I love. What's the difference between a palace and a prison? Well, there's a few things potentially, right? Like <laughs> one, the ability to come and go as you please. Right. You know, two, maybe the size and the, and the comfort of one versus the other. Mm. <laughs> right. And the uh, the palace sure. is, is more beautiful. It's, uh, it's much bigger, more open, right? right? The prison is condensed. It's you're trapped. You don't get to come and go as you please. And so imagine like if we create palaces for people, who isn't going to want to come back, even if they want to check out some other palaces, you know, but then right. you start thinking about it in the context of how many people out there are looking to create prisons for people. Yeah. I want to trap you. Most. Yeah. I want to possess you so that I have this, you know, security or control when the truth of the matter is, is you never control anything. Right. It's a complete uh, illusion, you know, and it, it, it makes me think of the, um, the Osho quote uh, I just pulled up here. If you love a flower, don't pick it up because if you pick it up, it dies and it ceases to be what you love. So if you yeah. love a flower, let it be. Love is not about possession. Love is about appreciation. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's like, so accurate. And then it's like, you know, all of these old sayings, if you love something, you know, let it go. Right. You know, it's it's true because if you're not trying to possess it, then you truly love it. As mm-hmm. soon as you're trying to possess it, you don't love it. You love what you're getting out of it. Right. And then it's like, you know, going back to this whole contractual relationship thing or relationship where it's like, I'm like, Hey, let's be boyfriend, girlfriend. It's like, I'm not, as soon as we, we have that contract, it's like, I'm not loving you. I'm loving what I'm getting from you in regards to the contract. In which really uh, the reason you're seeking it outside of yourself is because you haven't, you're not really, you know, what I've been saying and having the conversation with multiple people who are seeking a relationship. uh, It's just come up a lot in the last few weeks. And it's just, it's, it's come through so strongly. It's like, once you understand the path to getting whatever you want externally of self is going to reflect your internal state, how you feel about yourself, you need to fall madly in love with yourself. You are your own soulmate, your own flame like be get so into yourself if you can get into that state then how it really the sting of what someone external of you does is sort of gone and what's happening is you have people not only even in relationships i've had it where i've dealt with this recently with a couple very close dear friends that i love greatly where there's some there's jealousy around you know them sort of putting ownership on someone that they've been romantic with before even though there's not even a relationship and sort of you know okay well brandon you cannot not connect with this person because you know i saw him first i i it's like i putting a, a stamp on them like i own them in some way they, it, when the person doesn't even want that for the e- either they you know it's like I, I we have to get to a place where it's like i want for you what you want for you i don't own anyone but myself and i'm so into me it, what it, something can come something can go the lover can come it can they can love me they can hate me they can anything in between and I'm just going to continue to be love because it's a fountain that's pouring out from, from me. It just, it just, it, you know, it's always here. It's not in, in anything that shows up is, is just a reflection of that. It's a, it's a flower that's blooming in my face. And, uh, you know, I want to appreciate it as long as it's there and certainly not put a stamp on it and say, okay, I've made, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, you know, pissed on the, on the post here. This is my mark. It's like, it doesn't, it, it's, it's like old paradigm and, yeah. it, you know, and I understand it and I'm not judging it. And, you know, even these experiences, I've first had experiences I've had recently. I, I adore these people like that. I've had these experiences with, but it, it's, it's like, it's time for us to, those of us on this path to really start moving away from this, um, 
you know, separation mentality and ownership mentality. The only person we own is ourselves. Well, yeah. Well, and is that even the case? <laughs> right. Well, now you go down a whole nother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like what I love is this, this recent kind of download that, um, you know, everything is hidden in plain sight. Like all, all the secrets, you know, are there mm-hmm. in front of us. You know, when you get centered back into like, what's the first organ that that's created in the embryo? The heart. Exactly. And so like gets getting centered in your heart, like the heart doesn't hold on to anything, right? If it did, you'd have a heart attack. Right. And everything dies. Right. So by, by the heart actually not holding on to anything, it is the space for everything to flow through and everything comes back around to it. Right. It gives yeah. life to right. everything, to everyone. It gives love to everything and to every part of your body. Yeah. If it started focusing on only giving love to one part of your body, the whole thing dies. Right. You know, so when you like get centered again in like who and what you are as that first organ that actually gives life to the rest of the body, like out of that heart comes your, your sex organs and your brain, mm. you know, which is, it's funny. Cause you get like in the sex organs, you get duality, right? You get this, this right. splitting into either the, the ovaries or the testes. And then up above in the brain, everything is fused together in one. <laughs> Right. So like, this is where you were having the nature versus nurture kind of conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was saying, yeah, it's, it's funny how everything is in this kind of divine alignment. You know, when you think about it, because the part of us that's closer to the ground, like mother earth is duality is separation. Right. And in our earthly existence, like in our physical bodies, we're all separate. But when you go up to Father Sky and you look down, everything is one. It's all fused, you know, in this giant blue marble that we call Earth. <laughs> and, you know, and so then you get this context there and you see, oh, wow. So, so on a nature perspective, everything is separate. And the context for nature is survival, right? Mother Nature wants us to survive. So based on that, we all want to possess. We all want to, uh, well, the the survival context, survival of the fittest, you know, it basically is saying that whoever's better, you know, is, is going to do better. Right. But there's this whole notion that with nurture, like, which is not mother nature, but actually conceptual, like out of the air, we can pull these ideas of how we can live life, you know, with benevolence, how we can live life with compassion, you know, and how, how these different concepts actually raise the quality of life for ourselves, for others, and for the planet. And so we don't need to right. worry about the nature debates anymore because nature is there, you know, to support the basic functioning of life. But then we as human beings have this ability to nurture and to take ideas and actually use those ideas to structure, create a heart architecture around life that brings more love into it. And then in that space, we can create more beautiful experiences for each other. We can build palaces for each other with our ideas and our ways of being that everybody wants to come into the space of experiencing oneness with us. Because that palace is so beautiful because they experience themselves feeling so loved, so elevated in our presence. Like this is the thing when you get centered in the power of oneness and the power of your pure love that you are, everybody around you is going to rise in love with you to the extent that you don't, you don't need to own anybody anymore. You can take your pick of who you want to share time and space with because you have so many people in love with you yep 
that, yep. you know, and it's really by you being in love with yourself and not just being in love with yourself, but being the space of loving yourself so that you can express whatever your greatest passions are, whatever your greatest gifts are, that people are going to be drawn to those gifts and appreciate yep. them. And now you'll have people that are not only in love with you, but you'll have people that are in, in love with your greatest expression of yourself that are actually the ones yeah. that are going to support you and elevate you even more. Absolutely. I've experienced that firsthand as I've, you know, moved myself into becoming more of this next, what I see as greatest and grandest version of myself. Um, it's exactly that. It's like there's, instead of coming from this lack mentality and I've got to, I better catch someone. I'm getting older. I got to catch someone, then put them in a box quick. And, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's it, none of that energy is flowing through me. And there's so much like unconditional love as, you know, as I continue to do the work on myself it's like and and how that translates out to others well there are no others right so it's being reflected back to me and just the most amazing people that are there that you know and 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 it's not always a course about romantic or sexual connection right it's like in just every facet every type of connection possible is just like overflowing and it's just uh, it's and as you said you then get to just like sort of realize oh wow look at this beautiful feedback loop Uh, it's 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 a current of love it's a it's a it's a stream it's a river of love i don't need to grab all the abundance that's flying by and and put it on the store it on the shelf or store it on the shore uh and you know take the the beautiful fish out of the water and watch it flop around until it dies right i can just yeah. there's it, it's un it, it's it's unending amounts of abundance that we we stem from and i feel like i'm myself just you know learning to tap into this in a way where it's it's i can see i've seen enough to know it's it will only open up more and more and more as i continue yeah. to not live in fear uh and to to live you know two choices right always to live in to fear or love right and a lot yeah. of times with these uh the the traditional ways of approaching a relationship of all kinds is based on fear and um you know as i've slowly but surely been making that transition um man what a difference well and i i really like this new context like I, I, love and fear is great but it's also kind of conceptual i like to bring mm-hmm. everything back to like practicality and say mm-hmm. like integration versus disintegration mm. power versus mm. force right mm-hmm when I'm integrated, mm-hmm. I have more power. Right. right? If you're experiencing oneness with me. You want me to have whatever I want. Yep. Because you are me. <laughs> right. If, if I'm coming at a relationship with you from disintegration, I have to use force now to get what I want. Right. And then I'm using you to get what I want rather than loving you. So then even right. if you give me what I want... I experienced you. We both experienced disempowerment. Right. I mean, it's like winning that argument. That it, it's right. Sorry, it's like it, to interrupt, but it's like winning that argument where you're just a total asshole and you just go off on that person, and you know you finally sort of uh, uh, annihilate their, you know, so they just there's you win, right? right. Uh, they give up. They're they you defeated them with words. I've experienced this so many times in the past, and then it's like. Oh my gosh, that's the most hollow victory ever. <laughs> well, yeah, you won, but at what cost? Yeah, you really haven't. That's the thing. It's like now that person becomes like if if you're doing it at the cost of their disempowerment, you know, right. there's that person becomes passive aggressive. Right. Most often because it's like, you know, they weren't able to be fully expressed in that moment and have oneness. So they're often going to take it back somewhere. Yep. You know, or that gets taken back in that moment. I may give you what you want phenomenologically, which means like, you know, whatever you were wanting in that moment. And at the same time, I'm going to take my love away because I'm not experienced feeling empowered in oneness with you. I'm not feeling integrated. I feel disintegrated. Like, like you won in vanquishing me or taking from me rather than me getting to have the space to give to you. 
Right. You know, this is where we think our greatest power is in using force to get what we want. When in fact, like real power is not having to ask for anything. And this is the, this is the like real key that we, we start to get present to is we don't have to ask for anything. Like when we share our joy, excitement and enthusiasm with people for something that, Oh my God, Brandon, like I was just doing this with somebody the other day. It was great. I was like, look, I can look at that apple right now. And from the material aspect of my consciousness, I'm like, if I want that apple, I can go and grab it. I can use force to get it right. Mm -hmm. And that requires effort. I need to extend energy to go and pick it up. Well, I can also just share with you in that moment. Oh my God, Brandon, I'm so excited looking at that apple, like thinking about what it's going to taste like. Like I can all, Mm. I can already like taste that sweetness and like feel my, my brain lighting up, you know, from eating it. And then like, I, I did this, I've done this a few times in conversation with somebody like talking about a glass of water or a smoothie or something. And mm-hmm. they literally grab it and give it to me. Yeah. Well, and what's great is now you've given them the experience of giving to you and in, in, in participating in that joy, uh, you've included them and that's right. the thing about it. And we know this, you talked about lighting up your brain when, you know, uh, Wayne Dyer used to talk about this. He did this as an example, standing up in front of a crowd where he would go and I, I forget exactly his delivery, but in dramatic fashion, uh, you know, beautiful dramatic fashion. He was so good at, he like gave money to some someone in the crowd and then he points out he's like now so that you guys are all aware and they're all sort of like buzzing from this cool thing he just did he's like now what just happened is um basically uh all the happy chemicals you know are really were just released in my brain in the act of giving in the receiver's brain in the act of receiving and in those who witnessed it uh as well so it's like when you give in this way or you include others in the experience everyone is is winning well it feels very powerful right to be able to give because it means that you have you have abundance to give yeah right it it feels very disempowering to feel taken from Absolutely. So when we can empower people to be able to give to us, right, by letting them know what it is that, that excites us, we, we create the space to em- empower others. Yeah. And that's really like what, where I think the key is, is like just becoming like empowerers you know, of others. Yes. And I like to call I this like, it. you know, there's this whole thing that came through where like you, you know, kind of a divine coronation where we all get to be emperors and empresses, but mm. more than emperors and empresses, we're empowerers and empowerers. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And there's, and there's this holy divine royal, not empire, but empower where everyone yeah. is empowered together. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know I feel empowered by this conversation, Uh, Chris. Thank you. And I know the listeners do too. So, um, you know, I, I would, uh, You know, certainly recommend any of you guys out there who want to dig deeper down this, especially episode 347. It actually shares a a clip of from a TED talk with uh, Christopher Ryan and also episode 21, 639 and 389 if you guys want to go and dig deeper down the rabbit hole of this very fascinating uh you know relevant topic at this time in our collective evolution and um yeah chris thank you so much man for coming on and and empowering everyone and uh you guys make sure and reach out if you feel if you feel inclined to do so and let chris know how much you appreciate uh his continual contribution because i certainly have and he's been showing up and just you know here to do the work and to share all the things that he's put so much of his heart into for a long time and it, it means the world and uh yeah so chris what, what is the best way for people to to reach out to you if they care to do so um well i mean we've got our grateful generation which is an ever evolving thing you can find on facebook we've also got um uh, i have right now christopher jackson divine design 
which is a uh, coaching thing anywhere. I'm, I'm tending to post all of our podcasts up there as well. And um, yeah. And then they can reach out through there. And I definitely, and they can find that on like a Facebook page or something, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, um, cool. yeah, there's just one thing I wanted to like leave everybody with since our whole context was the, the poly discussion. And that was, you know, notice that wherever we have fear or resistance, that there tends to be some, some kind of like gift or growth for us. Mm, yep. And, and so when you're considering, like I've often in coaching people, when we're talking about, you know, whether monogamy or, or poly is, is the right choice for them. Like, I don't ever like to give advice, but more instead I'd give adventure. And so the question mm. that comes up is if there is some sort of resistance for you in being monogamous, then maybe there's a gift in there for you, right? Like maybe yeah. there's something for you to experience because maybe there's a fear of, of commitment. Yeah. And by, by actually giving yourself the gift of being in a commitment, you're able to actually liberate yourself even more. You know, and vice versa, uh, if you have a fear of, of not being in monogamy or a fear of poly or openness, then maybe there's something in that for you. Yeah. You know, and the opportunity to really face your insecurities and then experience how, how loved, honored, and appreciated you are fully, you know, without the the contractual security, which really is no security at all. Right. Yep. Yeah. I love uh, that. You make me think, uh, I think as Jack Canfield said, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Yeah. And, um, you know, your path is, is, you know, is behind that door. It's like that, that scary monster waiting there. It's like behind it is, you know, this, this lovable cuddly teddy bear. I think like the, the, the lump of yeah. coal is a diamond in disguise. And, yeah. uh, that's, that's an important, important piece and a wonderful way to, to, to end this. Chris, thank you so much. Now, well, well actually speaking of ending it, the, the best way to end it, my favorite way to end it is with some, some musical medicine and you have a uh, queued up, uh, the DJ booth with a track. What do you got? Uh, yeah, Trevor Hall. Um, this song, it's just like hit me so deeply. It's called uh, A Reminder. Mm. And it's like yeah, Hall, just uh, getting centered. Yeah, anyway. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> it's, just about, it's just about getting centered again and remembering who and what we are as pure love, as the heart the first organ in our body, which is really what I think some people say the seat of our soul. Yeah. Well, thank you for this reminder today, Chris, Trevor Hall, a reminder for you guys. Hope you enjoy until next, until next time journey. Well, love you all so, so much. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. Reflection, the embers They drew out a map And they showed you direction Your sender Is far in the east Where your heart is at peace When you enter My love is just a reminder Find your center My love is just a reminder Find your center 
My love is just a reminder My love is just a reminder Find your center yeah. Well, help me recall that first morning Sunlight at dawn and cracks on the floor Well, it's so there's a warning Everything's changing, I'll rearrange it So familiar, so amazing Hopped in the car, drove to the mountains Cows in the street, prayer be to a counting There was the river, eternal no giver Flowing forever, remember, find your center my love is just a reminder, find your center My love is just a reminder My love is just a reminder, find your center My love is just a reminder Just a reminder, find your center My love 